Hello again. Welcome to another episode of OTP HVAC School. This is Crystal and I will be talking to you today about igniters. Now this one is a silicon carbide and this one is a silicon nitride. And there's a huge difference between the two and a reason why a lot of OEM igniters are switching over to the nitride. So let's kind of talk about one, how igniters function and two, why you should probably be switching over to the nitride instead of the carbide. So the differences between these two is not just the texture but the material that it's made out of is actually more fragile than the nitride. And you can really see the difference when you put them alongside each other. I try my best not to break these things because it's very fragile. Uh, this one, not so much. They're pretty darn sturdy. You could tap them on something and they wouldn't break very easily at all. Um, the number one reason why these tend to come in uh, during the season is people mistake them for uh, their flame sensors. They pull them out, tap them against something, and psh, they shatter. Uh, another downfall to the carbide igniters is when you get your oils on these, it actually causes, and, and I'm talking about from your fingers, it actually causes the igniter to burn brighter and uh, more hot, I guess is the term I'm looking for, and definitely gonna cause it to eventually burn out and shorten the lifespan. Speaking of mistaking igniters for flame sensors, um, especially with the Amana units and some of the older Goodman units, uh, the flame sensors can look a lot like the igniters that they made for them at the time. So the reason that I mention this, especially for you guys that have this next igniter I'm going to show you, is the number one, number one seller, and I, I'm telling you a secret here, don't tell anyone I told you, but these igniters break so often because people mistake them for the flame sensor. Here's why. So the flame sensor for this unit looks like this, right? Now, check out the igniter. Um, it breaks so easily that they've actually replaced the OEM with one that's far more sturdy. You can see this design was just, whew, it's terrible. Uh, it's got these two weak little connectors here that form that rectangle. And so people would take this out, or people still take this out to clean it because they've been watching videos about cleaning flame sensors and smash. And when I say this thing is delicate, any little tap trying to remove it or take it out and it's, it's done, kaput, that's it. When taking out flame sensors, you need to have an idea of where the flame sensor is. The flame sensor is actually going to be opposite of the igniter on the other side of your burner plates. Whether you have two burners, three burners, uh, doesn't matter. Your igniter is going to be at the end of the first burner where your gas valve comes into. So your black pipe that comes up around through that manifold and then goes into this first burner plate, that is where your igniter is going to be. And you'll normally see them sit like this, some of them sit in like that, and they're going to be sitting towards the center. So your igniter is always going to be in that spot. It needs to be in that spot to create the spark that lights your burner. This little guy is going to be all the way on the other end near the last burner. And the reason for that is it needs to go all the way across all the burners 
to ensure that the furnace is functioning correctly and it senses that flame. And uh, we'll talk more about flame sensors later because these are actually really neat little guys. The whole process behind it is neat. Um, but it, short answer is it sends uh, a signal back to the board. The board reads that DC voltage and it goes, okay, everything's cool. And it keeps the furnace on. Because of these issues, a lot of manufacturers have actually caught on to the flaws of this design and how fragile and how quickly they break. So Carrier um, caught on you know, a few years later, 10, 15, whatever. Um, they actually replaced this igniter with this retrofit kit. Uh, it comes with this more durable carbon nitride and they just give you an adapter. Just plug it right back in there. Okay, so yes, that is the reasoning behind why they've started switching over to these guys right here because they are fantastic. Um, there are a couple of different ways you can check and see if an igniter is good or bad. Uh, for example, if you know your pressure system is good, um, everything's pulling closed like it should, your inducer motor is coming on, uh, your pressure switch is pulling in, and it gets up to the point of the igniter supposed to glow and jack crap happens, well, it might be this guy. And I can tell you a few things to check for. Okay, so one way to test and see if an igniter is good is we're going to check the ohms or the resistance on your meter. So again, make sure you have the settings set correctly uh, for your ohms. And we're going to put one lead on each. This plug has male connectors. So you might not get a super perfect reading, but just make sure that each lead is touching on the metal and we are getting 40 which is good you want it between 30 35 to 75 so that's one way to check it and I'll show you how to check it inside the unit the number one thing and I'll repeat this in a lot of videos you'll hear is checking for a fault code um, so before we even jump to the igniter possibly being the issue um, this one has a sight glass, but uh, it'll have a fault code somewhere on the panel of the unit. Uh, some are inside. Some are actually on the control board. But here you can see we have a bunch of different fault codes. So if you're getting something along the lines of uh, ignition proving failure, fail to ignite. If you're getting this code, then it could possibly be your igniter. So we'll take a look at how you can check and see if it's the igniter by checking the voltage. When you remove your panel from the furnace where your control board is, uh, there will be a door switch. And this door switch, before you can even test this, has to be depressed. Um, if it's not, it's a safety issue and the unit will not turn on, it will immediately fail. Uh, this has to be pushed in before you turn on the heat or the AC. Okay, now that we've established that we need it on volts AC and how to change it over on your own meter if you need to, let's get to it, turn on the heat, and I'll show you what we're looking for. Okay, so as you can see, I have unplugged um, the igniter connector from the power cord. Uh, this might not be as easy for you because this one had female connectors that I could just go ahead and put my leads into. Uh, as you can see, we still have it to hold AC. And uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it on, go through the cycle, and make sure that we have 120 volts. 
Uh, this line is going to be your neutral, and this line is going to be your 120. Uh, they need to touch both to get an accurate reading. Do not test it against ground. It needs to be touching both of those cables. Okay, we've got the heat turned on now, and once everything's gone through the cycle, boom, 122 volts. So we know that the board is sending power to the igniter. In a minute, it's gonna fail because it's gonna fail to ignite. But uh, this is an easy way, there's our fail. <laughs> so this is an easy way to check and make sure that you are actually getting voltage to your igniter. Once you see that you do have voltage going to your igniter, safety first. Always make sure that you untape the door switch. Do not leave it depressed like that. It is a safety issue. Your house could burn down. <laughs> well, it sounds so dramatic, but true. Make sure that you keep that untaped. So I was joking with my colleagues here. I was like, I should watch and end up breaking this uh, while showing you guys how to do it. It should be hilarious. And I also mentioned that I uh, posted if I did. So, um, use extreme caution when removing these sorts of things. For obvious reasons, you're near electrical. Don't be stupid and leave your stuff on. Right, now that we've got the screw here, and it's probably good to have a magnetic um, hex driver, hex bolt driver. Uh, so it doesn't fall off and get anywhere you don't want it to get. So it's gonna move. Um, keep both hands here. Now we're going to very delicately move this down. And there's so many spots that this thing can bump on. 